This video goes along with chapter 21 of this book, the last chapter. And in this video, I'm going to discuss nonlinearities. So, what's happening when the yield stress of a material is exceeded? And the basic message of this video is that you should never uh, rely on simulation data alone, but you should always uh, apply your engineering skills and knowledge to the problems and the, the results that you see on the screen. So, never rely on simulation alone to give you the answer. You have to always uh, use your engineering knowledge to, to consider if a part is safe or if it's not safe for use. So to demonstrate that here I've uh, got an image that showed three different kind of nonlinearities. Uh, a linear analysis is very simple. It means that when you double the force the uh, deformation will also double. And if a, a simulation is not linear then there's three reasons for that basically. Uh, you can have material nonlinearity so the stress strain curve I assume that most people watching this video will know what I mean uh, when the yield point of a material is exceeded uh, you you will see in SOLIDWORKS simulation a stress that is higher than, uh, than the yield point and in SOLIDWORKS simulation it's possible to, to reach stresses that can never be you really reached in reality so I'll show that with a demonstration later Another version of nonlinearities is, for example, contact. So you can uh, you can imagine if you double the force on these pliers, then the deformation of these plier bars will double as well until there is contact. In that case, doubling the force will not result in also a doubling of the displacement of these pliers. So that's also a different kind of uh, nonlinearity. Uh, linear analysis means uh, double the force means double the displacement. This is only valid by approximation until the point where these two bars of the pliers meet each other. And the last one that you can also uh, analyze with SOLIDWORKS simulation is uh, large displacement. So the tip of this uh, fishing rod, when there's a heavy fish hanging from it, will deform quite a lot. It will deform so much that the first geometry that you use for the simulation will not be valid anymore. So you can uh, analyze all these three nonlinearities with SOLIDWORKS simulation. However, uh, the first one is only possible to analyze with SOLIDWORKS simulation premium. You have to do a nonlinear analysis for that. But when you exceed the yield stress, it's up to you to to see as an engineer that the the simulation results are not valid anymore. So I'll, I'll just show the first one to start off with, so I'll, uh, I'll draw a part, simple part, for example, uh, just a cylinder, and extrude. I don't need the dimension at this point. And now, when I do uh, an analysis, static analysis, and I'll fix this part of the geometry and then I'll put a force on the other side so force in for example perpendicular to this plane reverse direction and I'll put a uh, a thousand newton on there I'll save the file Let's see and run the analysis Now I see a value of, of Mises stress of 88 newton per square millimeter. Uh, so that's still below the yield stress of this material. But when I increase the force, for example, with a, a factor of 10, 10,000, I'll rerun the analysis. You see it's a linear analysis. This value goes up by a factor of 10 as well but it's exceeded the yield stress so these results are not to be trusted anymore if you ever exceed the yield stress in a in a simulation the results of a, lin a linear study are not to be trusted anymore and actually what you should do if you still want to use the results is create a nonlinear analysis if you really want to analyze that but a convenient conclusion at this point would be that this part 
is not appropriate for this load because it's it's yielding plastically so therefore the material has actually failed so if you do want to analyze that you you have to go to a nonlinear analysis but uh, in most cases yield is not allowed and therefore you should keep all the stresses in a part be below the yield point of the material so then I've, uh, I've showed the first uh, the first uh, version of a nonlinearity with a material nonlinearity uh, pliers you can also analyze with SOLIDWORKS simulation I'm not gonna do that I'm trying to keep this video short if you want to do that uh, you can probably use the SOLIDWORKS simulation tutorials over here and here you'll find uh, a lot of examples and one of the examples will be analyzing a pliers here you see it so uh, you could do this analysis and make the two pieces of the pliers the two bars of the pliers make contact with each other so I'm not going to do that in this video, uh, the SOLIDWORKS simulation tutorials are very useful there for that. I am going to show the last uh, nonlinearity, it's a geometric nonlinearity and I can easily show that if I extend this bar for a long distance, now it's uh, 10 centimeters and I'll make it for example a meter, yeah, this should be long enough and then I'm gonna rerun this study same load ah, here you see the, the notification this means that the results are not linear anymore the geometry has changed so much that the results should not be trusted comparable to the fishing rod SOLIDWORKS gives you a notification of this and what SOLIDWORKS asks is do you want to see uh, the results with small displacements so that's actually not the correct result but you'll see what what's going on so if you choose no you'll see the result immediately and it will be wrong if you choose yes so SOLIDWORKS will iterate to the right result but it will take you a long time so uh, you should always read these notifications if you see them if I choose no right now then I'll immediately see a result but it will be wrong so here you see the result and if I would have chosen yes I would have seen the end of the the bar bend like a similar shape as a fishing rod under a certain load in this case it's uh, the wrong result but I do get it fast and if I uh, would have chosen the option yes it would have taken a, a long time, it, SOLIDWORKS would have to iterate, so it would have taken a long time, but the results would be more reliable. So that's uh, the notification of this last chapter of this book. Uh, always uh, use your engineering skills and uh, engineering knowledge when analyzing a problem and never rely on simulation results alone. So always do a, a small hand calculation besides your FEM analysis to see if your results are reliable. So thanks for watching.